Welcome to Foreign Models, I'm Philip Flory, the legend that is Wingnut Wings, one of their latest releases. Um, if you've never built um, a World War One plane before, you're terrified of rigging and stuff like that, certainly as I was, um, you might want to follow my uh, build that I did. I did the Sopwith triplane, first time I'd ever built a 132nd scale Wingnut Wings kit um, and it was an absolute joy, okay, and if you're in the mindset where you're thinking, you know, oh, shall I, shan't I? It's a bit like saying going for something like the, the better uh, manufacturer, shall we say, like Tamiya, things like that. Wing that wings, you know it goes together correctly. If it doesn't, it's something you've done wrong and you might want to tweak it, things like that, because these kits are absolutely legendary. So as you can see, we've got some beautiful box art that we come to expect from them. This is the Salamson 2A2, okay? Um, as I said, if you haven't seen one of their kits before, um, they are in a class of their own. They are far, far superior to anything that's out on the market uh, in this sort of genre, certainly. But as you can see, quick, quick round the box, got the usual bits and pieces in there. <clears throat> what you will find is, when you pop the lid, a beautifully packaged box. Everything always seems to fit with these. Now, um, to be honest, these kits, very, very similar, how they go together. We know they are gonna be perfect. So you don't have to worry about ejector pins because somehow Wingnut Wings have got that mythical thing about never putting an ejector pin in anywhere which seems to be in the way, or not that I've seen anyway. You're never gonna have flash. Um, the gates are always very small and everything else, but we can certainly look through the packets. So, starting off with, if we, we'll just have a look at the sprues first as we go in. So obviously clear parts, very limited on these because they didn't have many. So we've got little tiny windshields, a little sighting system, things like that. Beautifully done, okay? You'll find everything is totally separate bags, so you get no problem with them scraping or anything else like that. But what you can do is see quite easily through them. That's a nice touch. And again, usual thing, we've got um, markings on the wheels, on the rubber, for the manufacturer's marks, things like that, as you make your way around absolutely everywhere ribbing i presume this is the engine mount just down here looks absolutely fantastic you might be able to see the weaponry we've got the guns fitted down here again beautifully done uh, let's make our way through as i said i'll look out for flashing that but i've never seen it yet the engine okay so we've got a radial engine on this which is something a little bit different okay so it's certainly a bigger um, plane than what we've seen before very nice prop so we've got things like the screw holes and everything down in here you can see on the camera on that one absolutely lovely fantastic work and obviously you've got hoses and the lines and timing things and everything else you can imagine uh that is a duplicate i do believe of that one is it not <clears throat> just check the sprue that's d so we get two d's in the kit okay now some of the more important bits so we've got the fuselage so certainly from what i'm used to this is a far far bigger uh, plain than what we've seen before. So you've got this beautiful textured ribbing on the outside. The texture that the actual plastic has as well represents a fabric type texture uh, as you make your way through. So you'll notice that it does look like stretched over the formers and the ribbing of the actual aircraft itself, which is lovely done. And then you'll get things like this for the top area, obviously for the, uh, the pilot and the gunner at the rear, um, you know, for the tail gunner, just making sure. Um, so you've got that nice mixture between the fabric and the metal having slightly different textures, which is a nice one. Ribbing poking through, complete with little nuts uh, down there as it does in real life on the tailplane. And then down on the inside, you might be able to see we've got the ribbing through here. Injector pins, yes, they are there. Look, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. But if you notice, they're everywhere where it doesn't matter. As I said, very, very finely engineered the way that these actually go together and everything else. And again, you will never get ejector pins on large things like you would imagine, like on wings. Normally, something that big, you'll be pushing them out. You won't find them on wing nut wings. Okay, so into the more intricate parts, as we can see down here. So we've got this, uh, the cooling system down here, some of these bracing systems. I assume that's the cockpit floor down there. So you have got ejector pins in here, but again, they are for the inside, so you won't see. And making a way, we've got control surfaces just down here. Absolutely beautifully done. Um, all these little veins and air scoops and that are all completely open. No sign of flash in them whatsoever. Very crisp and clean. And these ones down here, these very small ones, they are absolutely beautifully done. Next brew up, we get into the more intricate parts and the smaller parts. Um, so you've got absolutely lovely the way these are done. No flash at all on any of the parts that I can see. Absolutely done. You've got the texture 
on some of these parts is absolutely phenomenal. Both sides textured beautifully, okay, and on the tanks, things like that, absolutely fantastic. Even right down to cushions, the cushions are actually textured as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Actually, it does look a very, very nice kit, this one. Okay, into the wings. As I say, normally something like this, you're gonna have ejector bin marks, but you don't find them. Again, beautifully textured. So you've got like that fabric texture for the fabric, but where it's stretched over the formers, it's a, a sort of, you know, because it would be tighter over those areas, it's not as sort of textured, which is a lovely thing. So it may, just makes weathering and things like that a little bit easier, as I found when I was doing mine. So again, fantastic on both sides. You've got ejector pin mark just down in here, but as I said, they are totally out of the way. They're gonna be buried deep in your fuselage of your model and all the way through. These little holes you can see over here, this is for your bracing of your wire. Doesn't have too much on these ones <coughs> compared to the other one. So, you know, it's uh, not too much of a problem for those in the control surfaces. The book, again, if you've never seen the wing nut wings, I'm sure you've seen my reviews on them before, but these books aren't just instructions. These are um, construction guides, I'd prefer to call them, because you get a lovely bit of data on the actual model itself that you're actually building, uh, your history, so you've got your measurements, your armament, references, things like that, all down in here. Color call outs, as you can imagine, so it's Tamiya Humbrol, and then you've got your FS, your federal standard stuff, as you're making your way through. Some of the parts you're not gonna use, obviously marked out in blue, but these are absolutely beautifully done. We'll look at the photo etch in a moment and the decals. But as you can see, when you look at these, the level of and quality of the instructions of how it's going in and how it's showing you with nice close-up photos to show you exactly what's going on with these is absolutely fantastic. So as you can imagine, starting off with your cockpit, making your way through, and then these famous ones. So if you want to put your bracing in, one little tip, I am no by any stretch of the imagination an expert on doing World War One aircraft, but what I can tell you, if you are doing bracing wire on the inside and even control cables, make sure they don't interfere with the body because the tolerances on these kits are so fine that if your wire is, you know, and we are talking, you know, 0.15 of a millimeter, but you think that's like 0.3 millimeters overall, it can push the sides out. And I know a lot of people have said, oh, they have trouble fitting fuselages, things like that. That's what it is. You have your wiring to the outside, it can interfere because the tolerances are that small. Little tips you can do around it is make little nicks, slight little indentations into the formers and that will give you the breathing space you need. Again, going through, absolutely fantastic. So we've got some nice photo down here showing the actual aircraft as well with this lovely radial engine at the front with the cooling scoops. And then the all important engine, very nicely detailed as you can imagine making your way all the way through. Absolutely fantastic. And then obviously the color call outs as well, extremely accurate. Beautiful photos again, showing you what you should be getting. Okay, and this is this uh, cooling scoop, which is beautifully replicated within the model. Fantastic injection molding on that one. And then all the way through, as you can imagine, fixing of the guns. And then you're starting with a uh, interesting bit, <clears throat> getting the wings on, and then we'll be into the uh, putting it all together. So as you can imagine, great shots, lovely references. And that's why I describe these as more of a guide rather than just instructions. It's not just like, you know, some exploded diagram saying stick A to B. These are actually showing you what you're looking for actually on these. So things like the little mirror here, pointing it out, sights, speed gauges, things like that, as you can see all the way through. Okay, the gun itself, mounting of the twins. Uh, getting them on the back, using the photo etch parts, which we'll look at in a moment, which makes up the rings, which gives you great detail. This bit here, which is the bit that always terrifies me, showing you about the wiring, showing you the thicknesses. So 0.15 for the, the actual rigging wire. And then you've got down here, uh, 0.1 millimeter for these ones running up to the top. And then obviously you'll have control lines and things like that. And then into the markings. So we've got some beautiful markings down here with some great uh, overall uh, photos showing. So there's the, the real aircraft for this one. Absolutely classic photo, beautiful. So down here, we've got the one from 1918 with the uh, four leaf clover on the tail. Absolutely lovely. And then we've got some others ones down here in different markings. Okay, and then you've got some great ones down here. You've got the, the elephant on the tail and it's nice to see this camo work coming in. And then you've got your general overall reference shots again, <laughs> big G on its end, but as you said, some fantastic reference photos for you. And if you're looking to be very clever, you can get in there and paint things like these on. 
again fantastic reconnaissance aircraft the Japanese manufacturer of this one again some beautiful reference photos again and then obviously about the team who put these fantastic kits together absolutely beautifully done the decals again it's one of those things I know we say about them the only thing I haven't noticed is the photo etch part oh there it is so there we go there's our photo etch part on the back as I said some beautiful work really helped out and I won't get this one out again but as I said these Japanese markings and everybody's markings down there the decals are fantastic used them before they absolutely fit a dream it's very hard to knock a wing nut wings kit because you know they're all a biplane it's not like it's something different but if you're in the know and you're a world war one this is totally different probably from anything i built or theirs before and everything else it's a later model of um, aircraft coming off the production lines but as i said it's one of those things it's so hard to have a problem with them and i was a complete convert if you as i said i'm doing the hard sale here guys because i built mine and went into it with my eyes completely shut you know thinking this is going to be a nightmare i've tried it before they're horrible they don't fit rigging it pulls it apart and everything else by the time i finished it i was a complete convert and also i enjoyed the build all the way through it's not like you got to the bit and you think oh god there's a horrible bit and everything else these kits build up beautifully so you get those internal fuselages right you get them in you can detail them up they're like models on their own okay then you start to put in fuselages and all the other bits and pieces you make way through the way through your build and they turn into something absolutely stunning at the end so there we go another legendary kit from wing that wings we've yet to see anything we don't like of theirs go and get one